Hi everyone, very good afternoon. I am Dr. Preeti Sharma and I have with me Dr. Nior who's got an amazing rank of 72 in the recently conducted NEET PG 2024. So heartiest congratulations doc on this amazing achievement and this amazing rank. How's the feeling and how is everyone uh, celebrating at home? Thank you Preeti ma'am. Uh, it's still sinking in. I'm very overjoyed and everyone at home is also very happy and I've been receiving a lot of calls from relatives and friends so it's I'm just taking it in slowly it's not completely set in but it's and sinking in slowly yes and it's going to in the coming days more so so uh, you know of course everyone who's joined in live and who would be watching it later on would want to know about your journey was this your first attempt did you give it alongside your internship so just give us a brief about what your journey has been like so I am a 2018 batch student. I completed my uh, MBBS uh, from uh, Baroda Medical College and internship from uh, SSG Hospital. And I completed my internship in mid-March this year. And yes, this was my first attempt. Okay, wow. First attempt and how? Because you've got an amazing rank. So how were you balancing things while in your MBBS days? Uh, you know, were you listening to the main videos or were you only referring to standard textbooks? Uh, during my MBBS days, uh, it was a balance of both, uh, but the focus was more on standard textbooks and wow. their clinical applications in the ward. So you had your standard textbooks and you had your clinical books that we would use. So more focus was on that. But at the same time, I was watching the main videos and making my notes uh, so that by the end of uh, uh, my final year, I had my notes ready and I had a basic skeleton of knowledge which I had to polish on. So during my MBBS, I, have, I did a balance of both. I focused more on the standard books and the clinical books and uh, attending wards. And uh, I also side by side was watching the main, media, main videos and making notes. Okay, got it. So I think a very uh, rare thing that I've heard from not many toppers and many uh, high rankers are that you were applying all of that information to your clinical wards also, which is so essential because this particular NEET PG exam has been application based. A lot of questions came where the students felt that there were questions which they, if they would have attended internship properly, they were able to solve that. So do you think that helped you in this exam as well? Definitely. Having an uh, having an eye in the clinics of what is going on, looking at the patients and understanding, uh, you know, how uh, the residents are examining the patient, being attentive in the OTs, I felt really paid off in this exam because this time there were a lot of introp images, the questions were very clinical. So even though I, there might have been questions which maybe I had never seen before, but just because I had the confidence that, okay, I have been in an OT, I've seen what uh, intra, what what uh, what it looks like uh, in within the OT and what uh, clinical uh, uh, vignettes are like, that gave me the confidence to also uh, understand and attempt and give my best to the questions which I perhaps thought that I did not necessarily know. So having that outlook throughout my MBBS and internship of including clinical uh, knowledge also in my uh, in my studies really paid off in this neat PG. I'm sure and uh, you know let's run through your last one year of internship and how you were managing your neat PG preparation alongside were you able to revisit your main notes and videos or did you resort to a shorter version say a rapid revision for the same? Uh, so, uh, throughout the internship uh, and uh, the first two-thirds of the internship, I would say I was sticking to my main uh, notes, uh, the main okay. videos, okay. because I had already read them at least once or twice till my final year. So, I was familiar with that body of uh, knowledge. So, I wanted to revise that more. But as the exam drew nearer, uh, I, I realized that I had to reduce the time that I was spending for each revision. Mm -hmm. So in that, I slowly and steadily started switching to more concise uh, forms of, uh, right. of uh, videos and notes. Uh, but of course, I always uh, made it a point that wherever there is, I feel like 
uh, I'm making mistakes in a particular topic or a particular topic is weak. There is some fundamental basics which are kind of weak. I would not hesitate to go back to my main notes and the main content perfect. to clarify that. I think that's the perfect balance that you created uh, in this journey. And we cannot not talk about the MCQs. So did you have a set number which you were solving on a daily basis? Were you going topic wise or custom modules? So uh, this was a lesson I, a lesson I learned uh, the harder way uh, because during the internship, somehow I wasn't able to do as many questions that I would have liked. Mm. And I realized that uh, as the exam drew nearer, luckily for me, uh, we got a postponement. So I had, I got the time to realize that that was a mistake and I rectified it. So in the last two, I would say after INICT, I would make it a point to solve at least uh, 80 to 100 questions minimum per day and by that time since I was uh, not going so much subject wise or topic wise and I was looking for an overall uh, revision mm. uh, I would solve it in a more custom module uh, right. uh, type of way rather than solving uh, subject wise modules. So one very essential thing that I've gathered and I'm sure the students have also is that as time went by, you were uh, molding your ways of preparing for the exam and you were, you know, customizing things, be it a mix of main videos and rapid revision or a mix of topic wise or custom modules, because that is how the preparation is as in when you get time in your internship, you mold as per this. And that is actually the true quality of a doctor to mold as per the situations that you have around you. So now that you've achieved this rank, um, just towards the last one month, if I take you, did you appear for the mock tests that were conducted by Prep Ladder? And if yes, were they similar in uh, any way that you wish to mention to the final NEET PG exam? Yes, I did take part in the champions test, both okay. for NEET PG as well as INICT. And uh, they were very similar to the actual exam which came because I remember a lot of weightage was on clinical questions they were long stem questions just like yes. the questions that we got this year in neat pg there were a lot of image based questions as well there were clinical questions a lot of mm -hmm. uh, paraclinical and non clinical subjects had been integrated with uh, the clinical subjects third and fourth year subjects just as the way they had been uh, presented in this particular exam so definitely that really helped to get an idea of what the exam uh, would be like. Yeah. And having given similar exam uh, exams before, which kind of simulate this pattern, just like the uh, champions exam did, it kind of, kind of helped me in the final exam because uh, as we all know, the paper was slightly different this time. But yes. since I had given uh, GTs and uh, the especially the uh, champions exam before which had similar questions I was not so phased by those new questions it felt like a GT maybe uh, uh, like a moderate or difficult level type of a uh, GT but I was not phased by those questions I knew that okay this is a question I need to apply whatever I know and I need to attempt it so giving the champions exam helped me uh, in that aspect as well Correct. I think um, that's very valid advice that you've given to the students. Um, and I believe a lot of students after the champions exam do come back to us saying that it was on the tougher side or, you know, probably this won't be similar to the main exam because they find it a little tougher. But I always tell them that it's always better to give a tougher exam and be prepared for the worst than to give an easy GT and go into that pseudo confidence that you will be able to crack the main exam. So I think somewhere because the exam was really tough this time, if I may say so, I think those tough GTs have somewhere helped because they prepared you for the worst and this session has been all about from bad to worse as we know all the events that have happened. So I think that somewhere prepared all the students and thank you so much for sharing all, all of these insights in your preparation. But now with the rank 72, have you been able to think of what ahead or is it still sinking in? Do we have a branch in mind? Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm mostly gravitating towards uh, medicine. That is something that has always uh, interested me and I really love the branch uh, as a whole. Uh, so most probably I'll be 
uh, taking medicine but i'm still uh, i'm not finalized as yet i'll be doing that in the coming days it'll it'll take multiple rounds i'm sure you're going to think and rethink over this a lot yes, till you absolutely. reach that final decision that's happened to each one of us and you must because a branch is something you live with through the rest of your life so give it all the effort and thought process that it requires but yeah whatever you settle in for i'm very sure with the clarity that you carry you're going to do extremely well in any field that you eventually opt for so before we end this session since it's your day and it's your stage anyone whom you wish to express your gratitude to and you want to thank from teachers family friends so it's over to you so uh, this is a collective effort even though it's my name written next to the rank but it's not a one man's uh, it's not a one man show it's a collective effort of my first of all my parents who have always been supportive and who have uh, made sure that i reach here uh, and have been played a integral part in that and of course my friends uh, who have also been an integral part i remember after the postponement and uh, the delays there was a lot of uh, you know you would lose motivation and all of that so we would yes. come up with something or some or the other creative way to kind of get back into the rhythm so like with oh, one nice. of my friends we would discuss a top a top two topics a day like once in the morning once in the evening so uh, that kind of helped set a rhythm because you have a schedule you know that at this time you're going to get the call you're going to discuss that particular topic with another friend of mine we used to share custom modules so we would uh, share two custom modules and then on chat we would discuss all the questions that each of us has got wrong so again that sets in a schedule so that really helped me to get over that a uh, slump that would set in right after postponement or somewhere even during preparation it's very natural to have that slump somewhere in between so having that really helps so i would like to give a shout out to arpit and anjali who were uh, uh, with me through this they would uh, make sure we would uh, you know have regular conversations and we would make a schedule to uh, make sure that we are sticking to our uh, goals targets and i hope you've done well too Yes, yes, they've they've done well. Great. Great. So, uh, and of course, uh, the last but not the least, uh, having this interview with you today feels like uh, you know life has come full circle because I'd like to share a small anecdote over here. I was in second year, and in the starting of the second year, I was not really. I mean, I didn't like and understand uh, pathology that much. And mm-hmm. after the lockdown, I started watching your videos online. So you would uh, the way you would dissect. Uh, you know histopath images and all types of uh, concepts which i found very difficult right from stains to you know right. uh, general path and interleukins and all of that and gradually that kind of uh, uh, made me more and more interested and more confident of pathology to the extent where i started loving it and it became my favorite subject and even wow. throughout the last one and a half year a uh, pathology has been uh, one of the top one or two subjects in most of my gts and i've always felt very confident of it and somewhere i feel that the effort that i put in in second year because uh, you made it seem so simple and doable has finally paid off so i feel really lucky and blessed to have this interview with you today after this rank because i feel you've been very instrumental in this because as we know pathology is something that links most of the subjects of most of the 19 subjects together and it's very important as well so i would like to thank you thank you so much for all the appreciation that you've put out but for me also i feel life has come a full circle because maybe you guys would not know but when you were in your second year yours was the first batch that i actually taught so for me it is like the first second year batch that i taught has finally cleared and given the neat pg and got amazing ranks and results so for me also it's a very nostalgic moment and now that you've reminded me of that second year incident it brings back a lot of memories to me also so thank you for sharing it and thank you for all the appreciation but of course i would want to say that the credit goes entirely to you because it is ultimately you who mugged up all that all of that information who you know applied it into mcq then who put in so much of blood and sweat into it and that has paid off in the best possible way so all the very best for your future and uh, whatever branch you ultimately land up in i'm sure you are going to work hard and you are going to achieve greater heights in life so thank you so much for sharing the screen and for sharing your journey with us thank you so much ma'am thank you thank you Thank you.